Hi, fourth grade. I am going to do a review today for lessons one through four that are in um, topic 14. This is Mrs. Hall, just so you guys know. Um, so we're going to start with, with a lesson one, which is using customary units of length. Now, customary units are the units that we use here in the United States. So around the world, they don't, not everybody uses customary. A lot of countries use metric, which we will go over in a different review video. Um, but we're going to learn about the customary units today. So here on my screen, I have the, um, the units that you guys learned about in topic or lesson one, which was feet, yards, and miles. And they also talked about feet as being 12 inches. So if we think about a ruler, a ruler is one foot long. It's also 12 inches long. So one foot is equal to 12 inches. That's important when we need to um, change the units um, to be different units, which we will get to in lesson four. One yard is also equal to 36 inches, and it is also equal to three feet. Okay, and then miles, there's 5,280 feet in a mile. So when you guys run around that track at school four times, you run 5,280 feet. And then one mile is also equal to 1,760 yards. So we can refer to these examples here when we're doing our guided practice um, through our review today. So let's start, we're gonna go through these guided practice problems and then we'll move on to lesson two. And we're gonna go through four lessons today in this guided video. So in questions one through four, we're gonna choose the most appropriate unit to measure the length of each. And we're gonna write inches, feet, yard, or mile. Okay, so I have a whiteboard here. Oh, where did my whiteboard go? There it is. My whiteboard here that I'm going to write my answers on. So we're going to start with one, number one. They're, they want us to decide how we're going to measure a highway. So if we think a highway, if we think about driving down the freeway, what are we driving? Are we driving inches? Are we just driving feet? Are we driving yards? Are we driving miles? Well, highway is very long, right? If you drove around the field four times, that's just a little bit, right? Our field at school, we go even further on the highway. So highway, we are going to measure using miles. And MI is the abbreviation for miles. Okay, now number two is a CD case. You guys probably don't see CD cases very much anymore because all the music's on our phones. Um, but a CD case is a, is a, a square. And it's um, probably a little less than half the size of a Chromebook, okay? So if we think about a Chromebook, a Chromebook might be about maybe a foot long, right? Um, a whole, like a, the size of a ruler, maybe a little bit shorter. So if a CD case is even smaller than that, what do you think we're going to use? If you said inches, you're right. So we're going to use inches to measure a case. A CD case. Now we wouldn't use a foot because it's not a whole foot long. It has to be at least one foot or more to be able to measure it with the foot. And then of course a yard is three feet. Remember up here we learned that a yard is three feet. So that's even longer. And then of course a mile is a lot of feet. So we would not use those to measure the CD case, but we will use inches. IN is the abbreviation for inches. Okay, number three, a football field. So when we are going to measure a football field, um, those of you who play football, it might be a little bit easier for you to know because when you um, talk about playing football and you're um, even watching football, you hear this term a lot um, being said. But in a football field, think about is it, would a football field be a whole mile, kind of like a highway? Not really. That's too much, right? The players can't run that far. So would it? could it be yards. Yeah, it could be yards. And if you know football, they actually measure in yards and they say yard one and yard two and things like that. Um, I'm not a huge football fan, so I don't know the exact terminology, but we could use yards for that for a football field. Now feet, it would be a lot of feet. 
Okay, I don't remember how many yards exactly are in a football field, but it would be a lot of feet to measure a football field. So if it takes too much of something, then we don't want to use that. Just like if it's not enough, we don't want to use it. But if it's too much, we don't want to use it. And then inches, of course, would be a lot of inches. So we're not going to use inches to measure a football field either. Okay, going on to number four, a room. So think about your bedroom or your living room or your kitchen even your bathroom. A lot of times we measure this when we want to paint or when we want to maybe put in some new carpet or some new flooring. Um, and if we think about that, is it going to be miles long? Is your room miles long? No way. There's nobody's room is miles long, right? It's not four times around our field. Would it be yards? Possibly but it's probably only going to be a couple yards. So it, that's not the right way to measure a room. Um, feet. Yeah, feet would be good, right? Because we can easily use a ruler and we can measure. Um, if you're measuring a room, you want to use a measuring tape. Um, but it's easiest to measure using feet. And that's also how they sell the paint and the flooring and things like that. Let's see how many square feet do you need? And so you can measure your room to find out how many square feet you will need, which you will um, also get into in our, I think our next topic when we talk about perimeter. Okay, so let's look at number five. So here's our problems that are a little bit harder because we have to think a little bit more, right? So communicate. Is a one foot piece of ribbon longer than a one yard piece of ribbon? Okay, so if I have one foot and I have one yard, Okay, so which is one foot longer than one yard? Well, remember up here, one foot is equal to 12 inches. So let's write that. One yard is equal to, oh, let me move up a little bit. One yard is equal to three feet, and it's also equal to 36 inches. So if we look at this and we compare one foot is 12 inches and one yard is 36 inches. Is the foot longer than the yard? No, the yard is going to be longer. So this kind of gets into a little bit of conversions, which we'll talk more about in lesson four, but we can use these two things here where we know a one foot is 12 inches and one yard is 36 inches to determine if it's longer. We can also look at these here, the feet, right? One foot and three feet. Well, if a yard is equal to three feet, then a yard is definitely longer than one foot. So one foot is shorter than one yard. Okay, number six. Greg wants to measure how tall his two-year-old sister is. What two units could he use? And explain your answer. Okay, so a lot of you may know how we measure ourselves as people. I am five foot five inches. You may know how tall you are. When we have um, younger kids, they tend to be shorter, right? They're smaller. And so we may have a different way of measuring them. So most of the time we measure people in feet. So that could be one way that we measure somebody. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense, right? We can take a ruler and we can even kind of use a ruler to measure ourselves very easily, right? We would never use miles. We are not miles long. We would never use yards because we're, nobody's really more than maybe two yards. So that's um, not something that we would use, but feet we could easily use. And then in what's below feet. So remember we learned up here, we have miles and we have yards, we have feet. And then here we have inches as well. So the one foot is equal to the 12 inches. So when you're a baby, when you have a small baby, they may be a foot long, but they're not yet two feet long. And so we tend to say how many inches they are, especially when they're first born. You might hear this a baby is seven pounds, six ounces and 19 inches long. So we don't quite yet use feet with them because they're barely one foot. They're not even two foot. So another way to measure a two-year-old would be in inches. So feet and inches. Okay, so let's go on to lesson two. In lesson two, it's still customary units. That's what we use in the United States. 
And, um, oh, let's go back up here. And there, we're talking about capacity in lesson two. So customer units of capacity. So one cup, capacity is typically measuring liquids. So one cup, one pint, which would be like a water bottle. One quart would be like um, a, a jar of juice you might have, or, or even, even milk can be in quarts. And one gallon, most of you, especially if you have a big family, you probably drink a um, gallon of milk. When your parents go to the store, they probably get a gallon of milk. They may get a gallon of juice, but it's about this big, okay? The cup is usually used for measuring out maybe some water if you're cooking some pasta or um, noodles or things like that. I use it a lot when I bake and make cookies and cakes and cupcakes and things like that to measure out even my flour, um, but it is typically used for liquids. So let's go through our guided practice here. So which is the best estimate for the capacity of each item? Okay, so number one is a tub. So think about your, your um, bathtub at home. Um, how would you measure that out? So would you use just three gallons? So think about like, think about your gallon of milk that you might buy at the store. Could you fill up that bathtub with just three gallons of milk? Or would you maybe use 30 gallons of milk? That sounds more about right, right? Maybe three gallons could be your sink, your um, kitchen sink, or maybe your bathroom sink. But 30 gallons is going to fill up the tub. So number one is going to be 30 gallons. Number two, we have a glass of, ooh, is that coffee? I like coffee. Okay. Uh, maybe, or maybe it's a milkshake. I don't know. This is a, a book for kids, right? Okay, so so this glass right here, do we think that this is two cups? Sorry, I'm kind of going all over the place. Or two quarts. So look up here. There's a cup, okay? And then here's a quart. So in this glass here, do you think two of these quarts could fit into this glass? Doesn't seem like it, right? But if I look at this cup here, that seems like we can probably take this and pour it into one cup and then dump it out and then there'd probably still be some more left to pour in again, right? So two cups is a better estimation of this glass of, let's say chocolate milk. I like chocolate milk too. Okay, number three, we have this um, maybe uh, some milk or something. It kind of looks like the one that you guys use, um, that you guys drink at school, right? So um, it maybe a little bit bigger because actually the it's asking us is it going to be one pint or four gallons so this thing of milk or juice whatever you want it to be is that going to be one pint so could you fill up this water bottle with it or is it going to be four of these gallons no way it's going to be four of those gallons right these containers are small so that is going to be one pint okay and number four this looks like maybe some vegetable oil that maybe your parents might cook with. Is that going to be one cup or one quart? So if we look at this, um, a lot of times your parents buy them kind of in a taller um, bottle, kind of like this one. Um, so would it just be one cup? Can I pour this liquid into a cup and would the whole thing dump into that cup? It probably wouldn't fit, right? It'd probably start overflowing. So our other option is one quart. Do you think that would fit into this bottle here? Yeah, it looks like it would, right? So one quart would be this vegetable oil here. All right, moving on to number five for the harder problems that do you understand? Look at the quart and gallon containers above. Estimate how many quarts are in one gallon. Ooh, okay, so let's look up here. We have a quart and we have a gallon. What do we think is going to be in, how many quarts are going to be in that gallon? So when looking at it, I think, I mean, one for sure, you know, obviously this is a lot bigger. Two, I think, I think two might even just fill it up halfway. So I'm going to say I think three of these will fit into one of these. And we have to think about dumping that liquid in and where it would be. So if I dump this in, I feel like that it would probably be about right here for the first one. And then another one would be about here, which is halfway, right? 
and then two more. So I think it's going to be four quarts. Okay, and that's just my estimation. It may be three quarts. Um, but I think it's definitely more than three quarts, and it might even be five quarts, right? So our estimation is going to be four quarts in one gallon. Okay, number six. Oh, I, sorry, I didn't show you guys that. So four quarts in one gallon. Okay, number six, estimate how many quarts it would take to fill the kitchen sink. Ooh, I use this example over here, right? When we were talking about the bathtub. How many quarts do you think it would take to fill the kitchen sink? Hmm, well, when we were talking about the sink, I mean, the, um, the gallons over here with the tub, I thought that maybe three gallons would be some would be enough to fill up a sink, right? A kitchen sink's a little bit bigger than the bathroom sink, so maybe four gallons. So it might take about four gallons. So so let's let's do some math here. So if I think it's four gallons, and up here I said that there's about four quarts in one gallon, then we can times this by four, right? to get how many quarts are in a gallon. Because if one gallon is equal to four quarts, then if I times this by four to get four gallons, I have to times this by four to get four quarts, right? So 16. So 16 quarts would be um, something would be enough to fill up a whole kitchen sink. And that's just my estimation, okay? Um, you may estimate that it's five gallons to fill up the sink. And so if that would be true, then you would change this here to a five. And then you would times that by four because we think that there's about four quarts in one gallon. And you might get 20 quarts, okay? So this is just an estimation. All right, number seven. This one looks pretty easy. Which is greater, one cup or one quart? Well, if we look up here at one cup and then we skip over here to the one quart, which one is greater? The one quart. That one's easy. You're not going to have that on your test though, right? You're not going to have those visuals, so you have to kind of memorize what's bigger. So you have to know that it goes from a cup to a pint to a quart to a gallon, okay? And that's the... Um, going from the smallest unit to the largest unit. Number eight, which is greater, one cup or one pint? Oh, easy again, right? We can just look at these for now. One cup or one pint? One pint is definitely bigger than one cup. Okay, so let's move on to lesson three. Okay, so in lesson three, we are learning about the units of weight. Okay, so we have ounces. One ounce would be equal to about um, the weight of a of a key, okay? One pound, that's usually how we measure ourselves, right? How many pounds are you? How much do you weigh? And one pound would be about the weight of a kitten. So not a cat, but a kitten, so a smaller cat, okay? And then one ton would be about the size of a giraffe. So a giraffe would be about one ton. Okay, an elephant would probably be more than one ton, right? Because elephants are a lot bigger than giraffes. Okay, so we're using ounces, pounds, and tons. Okay, so let's look at number one. For one through four, give the best unit to measure the weight of each item. All right, so let's use green for this one. So number one, this is lesson three. Okay. So a slice of bread. So if I think about a slice of bread, it's bigger than a key, but it's very fluffy, right? So the weight is not very much. So if we think about that, even though it's larger than a key, but it's very light in weight, I think we would use ounces to measure bread because bread would not be as heavy as a kitten, right? A kitten would be a lot heavier than a slice of bread. So we're gonna use ounces. O-Z is the abbreviation for ounces. Number two, a sheep. Hmm, a sheep. Well, a sheep is definitely bigger than a kitten, right? Which is one pound. 
um, but it's a lot smaller than a giraffe. So there's no way that the sheep is going to be at least one ton. So we would use pounds to measure the sheep. And pounds, the abbreviation for pound, it's kind of a silly abbreviation. It's an L and a B for pound. I'll write that in parentheses. Pounds. Number three, a helicopter. Oh, a helicopter. Okay. So a helicopter has a lot of weight on it, right? Because it's made of metal and there's a lot of engine parts and things that are made of metal. And so it's very heavy. So definitely bigger than a key, definitely bigger than um, a kitten and probably closer to a giraffe, right? A giraffe has a lot of weight because it has a lot of um, uh, like muscle and things like that, that weigh it down but so does a helicopter with all the metal that it has and all the machinery and like in the seats that are in it and things like that. So helicopter, we're going to measure with tons. And you can see here that tons is just a capital T for its abbreviation. Okay, and number four, we have a bicycle. Okay, so a bicycle definitely weighs more than ounces, right? Because it's definitely a lot more than a key. It's a lot more than a kitten, but not as much as a giraffe, right? And remember, a giraffe is one ton. So if it's less than a ton, then we can't say that we're going to use tons to measure it. So we're going to use pounds to measure this bicycle. So we're going to do the L and the B again for pounds. All right, now let's go on to the problems that are a little more difficult. Do you understand? Question number five. Sorry, my whiteboard went away for a second. How can you tell that the weight of a peach is not eight ounces? Oh, okay. So how can we tell that a peach is not eight ounces? Well, if I know that a key is one ounce, a peach is a little heavier than a key, right? Is a peach going to be heavier than a kitten? Hmm. Well, I haven't learned how many ounces are in a pound yet. So let's go back to this key. What if I have eight keys? So if I'm holding eight keys in my hand, do you think that that is going to be the same as a peach? So how can we tell that the weight of a peach is not eight ounces? Well, I think the keys are going to be a lot less heavy than the peach, right? Eight keys in your hand is not a lot of weight at all. So I think we would measure a peach using pounds, right? Maybe it's one pound or two pounds. So I think we can determine that we're not, it's not going to be eight ounces because it weighs at least the amount of the kitten, if not more than a kitten. So it's going to be um, pounds. And so we would not measure it using ounces and it's going to be more than eight ounces okay and number six which weight which weighs more six ounces of raisins or six pounds of raisins okay so six ounces and six pounds well if an ounce is is a key and a pound is a kitten think of what if we had six keys and six cats six kittens what is going to weigh more, the six keys or the six kittens? Definitely the six kittens are going to weigh more, right? So the six pounds is greater. So for this, we could say six ounces is less than six pounds for our answer. All right, let's go on to lesson four. Okay, so for lesson four, we're changing our customary units. So this chart here is going to be very, very helpful when we are changing our units. Now, when you guys take your test, you need to try to memorize as many of these units as we can, okay? So if we look here on length, we learned this earlier, one foot is equal to 12 inches. So a ruler is one foot or 12 inches. One yard is, remember we talked about one yard is three feet, but it's also 36 inches because three feet is equal to 36 inches as well. One mile is 5,280 feet. One mile is also 1,760 yards. Now with capacity, they didn't teach us this earlier. So with capacity, 
one tablespoon, which a tablespoon is the little spoons that your mom and dad's use to measure out food, um, or maybe you do as well. Maybe you measure out some, um, some baking soda or some salt to put into your pancakes or things like that. So that's a tablespoon. That's equal to three teaspoons. A teaspoon is even smaller than the tablespoon, but three of those teaspoons could fit into one tablespoon. Okay. We measure liquids with that as well as um, some solids like flowers and salts and things like that. One fluid ounce. Now a fluid ounce, um, I think is always talking about um, liquid if I remember correctly, but one fluid ounce is going to be equal to two tablespoons. One cup, remember we talked about that, they showed the measuring cup, that is equal to eight fluid ounces. And we did talk about the ounces um, when we talked about weight. So ounces could be over here with capacity as well as weight. So one cup is equal to eight ounces. One pint is equal to one cup. One quart is equal to two pints. So remember those the, that measuring cup? We could pour two of those into the one pint. We can pour two pints into the one quart. So remember the pint, um, I think that I think the one pint was a water bottle. We can pour two of those water bottles into that juice container that we saw for the quart. And then four quarts, so that juice container, we can pour one, pour four of those into a gallon. So that kind of helps us understand. So we could even go revisit back to that one question where it says how many, um, how many gallon or how many quarts can go into a gallon or something like that. We could probably revisit that and get our answer more correct, right? But earlier we were just estimating, so it's okay. Now weight, one pound is equal to 16 ounces. Remember we just talked about the key and the pound was a kitten. So if we, if the kitten is one pound, we can also say that the kitten is eight, um, 16 ounces. And then one ton, so that giraffe is 2000 pounds, okay? So this chart, like I said, is going to help us when we're doing our example problems, okay? Oop, and I think those are on the next page. So we may have to go back and forth a little bit. Okay, so guided practice. Okay, so number one. In one through four, we're going to find each missing number. Oh, okay, so we got six tons. Remember, tons are the giraffe. Six tons is equal to how many pounds? So we need to fill that in. How many pounds? Well, I just learned that one ton is equal to 2,000 pounds, right? Oh, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm not showing you my board. Okay, so we have six tons is equal to how many pounds? One ton is equal to 2,000 pounds. That we, we just learned that in our chart that we saw. So if I need this one ton to now change to six tons, I can easily do that by multiplying this by six to get six tons. Now I have my equal sign here. Whatever I do to this side here, I need to do to this side here. So I'm going to also multiply this 2000 by six. Now I know this looks hard, but it's really very simple because we can use our basic fact and then add our zeros, just like we learned earlier this year. So six times two, if you don't know six times two, some of you guys are able to use your chart, your multiplication chart, so do that. Um, the rest of you guys know most of your multiplication problems already. Six times two is 12. And then we have one, two, three, zero. So we're gonna add those three zeros. So that means that six tons is equal to 12,000 pounds. So then up here, as an answer, we would write 12,000. All right, let's go on to number two. A lot of these problems, guys, we're going to be doing the same exact way. So once you guys get used to it, it'll become a lot easier for you. Okay, 12 quarts. 12 quarts is equal to how many gallons? Okay, so let's think back on our chart. 12 quarts, I mean one quart. One quart was equal to, I believe it was four, um, four quarts or in a gallon, but let's make sure. One gallon and four quarts. Okay. And I wrote this out wrong already. Okay. So let's 
let's go here. Okay, so four quarts are equal to one gallon, right? Four quarts are in one gallon. So I want these quarts to match the quarts that are here, right? 12. Well, to get to 12 using multiplication, I can times this by three to get to 12 quarts, right? So what I do to this side, I have to do to this side, okay? So we're going to multiply this by three as well. And that equals three gallons. So 12 quarts is equal to three gallons. So then I can, in this little thing here, I write three. So 12 quarts is equal to three gallons. Okay, so you see how we did that the same way with the multiplying, okay? All right, so let's go on to number three. Seven pounds is equal to how many ounces? So seven pounds is equal to how many ounces? So earlier we learned that one pound is equal to 16 ounces, right? Let me, let me double check on that just to be sure. One pound, 16 ounces. Yes, okay. I wanted to double check and make sure. So one pound is equal to 16 ounces. So, but I need it to equal to seven pounds. So I'm going to easily just multiply this by seven to get seven pounds. And what I do to this side, I need to do to this side. So I'm going to multiply this by seven. Now, I don't know 16 times 7 right off the bat, so I'm on the side over here. I'm going to multiply that 16 times 7. 6 times 7 is 42. Carry my 4. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 4 more is 11. So that's 112 ounces. So 7 pounds is equal to 112 ounces. So I'm going to fill that in here. 112 ounces, okay? So you see how this is... Um, somewhat repetitive, right? We're just multiplying in order to find our answers. Okay, let's do number four. Three yards is equal to how many inches? Okay, so remember earlier, we actually did this in lesson one as well. One yard was equal to 36 inches. Do you guys remember that? One yard was equal to three feet. One foot is 12 inches, so three feet is 36 inches. 12 times three is 36. So therefore, one yard is also equal to 36 inches. Well, I need to get to three yards, right? So I need to multiply this by three to get to three yards. And what I do to this side, I need to do to this side. So 36 times three. Again, I don't know this right off the bat. So on the side, I'm going to do 36 times three. Six times three is 18. Carry my one. Three times three is nine plus one more is 10. So it's 108 inches. So three feet are equal to 108 inches. Okay, let's do... <clears throat> A couple of these, and then I think I want to look at some of these um, more difficult problems. So let's do number five. So they want to know five feet and 57 inches. They want to know what is greater than less, and we have to compare this, right? Well, if I know that one foot is equal to 12 inches, then I can do the same thing like we were doing earlier, right? I need to get this one foot to five feet. So times that by five to get five feet. So what I do to that side, I need to do to this side, 12 times five is 60 inches. So now I can even write this 60 inches. I can write this down here, 60 inches. So now I'm comparing inches to inches. So before, I, I can't compare this 5 to the 57 because it's different types of measurements. We have to convert one or the other into the same unit. So we're going to, I converted it to inches. So now that we have inches and inches, so I have inches and inches, 
I can compare that. Well, what's bigger, 60 inches or 57 inches? 60 inches is bigger, right? So I'm going to use the greater than sign. So now that I know that 60 inches is greater than 57 inches, I also know that 5 feet is greater than 57 inches because 5 feet is equal to 60 inches. Okay, so let's do one more of those. Let's do number 6. 16 fluid ounces. We're going to compare that to 3 cups. Okay, so... Oops. I did not type that right or write that right. Okay, three cups. Okay, so I'm going to go back and glance really quick. One cup is equal to how many fluid ounces? Let me double check that. One cup is equal to eight fluid ounces. I see I get confused with the one pound and the 16 ounces and the one cup and the eight fluid ounces. So I have to double check that. Okay, so 16, so one cup. Um, one cup is equal to eight ounces, but I need to get to three cups, right? Oops, sorry. So one cup is equal to eight ounces. I need to get to three cups. So times this by three, that gives me three cups. What I do to this side, I have to do to this side. So I'm also going to multiply eight times three. That gives me 24 ounces. So now, now that I know that three cups is equal to 24 ounces, I can use that, right? I can use that 24 ounces here. It's actually 24 fluid ounces. So now I can compare the fluid ounces to the fluid ounces, right? Well, is 16 fluid ounces greater than 24 fluid ounces? No, 16 fluid ounces is less than 24 fluid ounces. So once I converted it to ounces, I can easily compare them. Okay, so now let's go to some problem-solving problems. So this will give us some good practice with some, some word problems. So I am on number 31 now in our book. And it says, the longest tail feathers of any bird are those of the Argus pheasant. The feathers measure 5 feet 7 inches in length. How many inches long are these feathers? Okay, so I know that they're 5 feet 7 inches, but they want me to convert this whole thing into inches. Okay, so that means that I need to take this 5 feet and figure out how many inches that is, and then I need to add it to the 7 extra inches that are on the bird's feathers. Okay, so I know that... One foot is equal to 12 inches. Remember earlier, back in lesson one even, we talked about um, a ruler. A ruler is one foot. It is also 12 inches. So one foot is equal to 12 inches. Well, I need to get to five feet so that I know how many inches that is equal to, right? So times this by five to get to five feet. And what I do to this side, I have to do to this side of my equal sign, right? Times that by 5 feet. So I get 60 inches. So 5 feet is equal to 60 inches. So I know that the bird's feathers are 60 inches plus 60 inches plus the 7 inches. Because remember in our problem over here, it doesn't just say 5 feet. It doesn't just say 7 inches. It says the feathers measure 5 feet 7 inches, just like we talk about people. I am 5 feet 5 inches, okay? So I need to take this 60, and I need to add it to my 7. And that gives us 67 inches. So the pheasant, the pheasant's feathers are 67 inches long. Okay, let's do one more of those, and then we will wrap it up. So let's look at question 32. A super stretch limousine is 240 inches long. A pickup truck is five feet long. Ooh, which is longer? So 240 inches is our limousine. We're going to compare that to something that is 19 feet long. Okay, so let's see. 
Well, I, I know that one foot, and you guys, you can do this in multiple ways. You can even convert the feet into inches if you wanted. Um, I like to just start with what I know. I know that one foot is equal to 12 inches. I know that right off the bat. That's easy for me. Okay. And you may be remember that from when you were in first grade and first learned how to use a ruler, right? So one foot is equal to 12 inches. Well, I need to get to 19 feet, don't I? So I'm going to multiply this by 19 to get 19 feet. What I do to this side, I have to do to this side. Multiply this by 19. Now this multiplication is a little bit more difficult, but we did learn how to do this, right? I'll show you two ways. We can use our standard algorithm like this. 2 times 9 is 18. Carry the 1. 9 times 1 is 9 plus 1 more is 8. But then I have to have my little placeholder because now I'm moving on to my tens <clears throat> place value column. And so I need to start here with my number, right? So I put a 0 here. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. And I add my partial products up. So 228. Now the other way that I like to do it, my favorite way is using the array. I'm sorry, the area model. I like to use the area model. If, if you don't like to use it, that's okay. You don't have to. But we take the 12 and we break it up kind of like expanded form. 10 and 2. I'll pull this down for a second. And the 19 would be 10 and 9, right? 10 times 10, 100. 10 times 2, 20. 10 times 9, 90. 9 times 2, 18. And then we take all of those numbers and we add them up. And I get the same answer, 228. Same answer. Depends on which one you like to do. Okay, so two, so then this is 228 inches. So 19 feet is equal to 228 inches. So we can use, um, we can write here 228 inches, and we can now use this. We can compare inches to inches. Well, what is more, 240 inches or 228 inches? Well, 228 inches is more. So it's going to be 240 inches is greater than 19 inches. So that means which is longer? Well, if the limousine is 240 inches long, then the limousine is longer. And so our answer would be the limousine. Lim ooh, limousine. Okay. Now let me show you a different way to do that because some of you may like division more. My preference is multiplication, but if you like division more, then that's cool. So 240 inches, and we're comparing that to 19 feet again, right? Well, what we can do to use division is that we can take this 240 inches and we can divide it to figure out how many feet, okay, are in 240 inches. So we would take this 240 inches and we would divide it by 12. Now we're dividing it by 12 because, like I said one um, earlier, one foot is equal to 12 inches. Okay, so if we take this and divide it by 12, we, we have 240 goes into 12. So let's just start with the 24. 24 divided by 12 is 2. Oh, let's write our DMS B and R in case we need it. Okay, so that is 2. Check. 2 times 12 is 24. We multiply. Now we're going to subtract 0 bring down our zero, and then we go back up to dividing, right, if we're not done yet. And we just have zeros here, so we can just add a zero here as well. So 20 feet. So this is 20 feet. Okay, that's what that gives you is 20 feet. So because we do divided by 12, which is how many inches are in one foot, now we know that 240 inches is 20 feet. So now we can compare feet to feet. And again, just like earlier, 20 feet is more than 19 feet, right? So the limousine is still, whoop, I'm spelling it wrong, is still bigger, which it should never, it should always, it should always be bigger, right? As long as we did our math right.
your limousine is longer than the pickup truck. Okay, so I hope this review was helpful for you. We went through four different lessons. The first three lessons were just talking about um, like how to measure things and um, stuff like that. The fourth lesson is a little bit more in depth where we're having to actually having to convert things from inches to feet and ounces to pounds and things like that. So this is a little bit more in depth of a lesson. Um, but I hope that this was helpful for you. You do have a quiz on these four lessons, and then we'll go into the next um, four or five lessons, which are going into the metric units, which we will talk about in that next video. So I hope you enjoyed this video and good luck on your test and quizzes.